Oh boy, here it goes. <laughs> Wasn't anticipating this. I'm Zach George, I train dogs, and this is my new dog, Inertia. I'm taking you along as I train her from day one. You can start from the beginning or pick up anywhere and start learning. Welcome to the dog training experience. In today's episode, we'll go to puppy class, do some leash training, try to get Inertia to listen better in public, work on wave, puppy biting, and continue working on teaching her to settle down in the house. Today's episode is sponsored by PetFlow. Make sure your dog's food is always there when you need it. Have PetFlow ship your food every two or three weeks or whatever time interval you choose. All you do is select the brand of food you want and how often you want it. Get a substantial discount for trying it out. Enter code ZAC30 and get $10 off your first three orders. I'll have a link below. As you know, we've been taking Inertia to puppy class to give her lots of experience playing with other dogs as well as doing some light training in a distracting environment. Inertia is a little more warm, pretty quickly. That's different than the last couple of classes, but she's gotten to know the dogs. Oh boy, here it goes. <laughs> little wound up. Come here. During this class, we alternate puppy socialization with some basic training. Can I have a sit? Yes, perfect. Can I have a down? Oh, that's wonderful. That's very good. Okay. Can I have a sit again? Yes. Good. Here we're working on puppy push-ups. That is, sit and down over and over a few times. Can you sit? Yes. Notice how in this session, I'm rewarding intermittently too. Not bad, Inertia. All right, it's time for some more play. It's funny how she gravitates to Ruthie. Inertia loves to play pretty rough, but everything here appears pretty friendly. Remember, pairing your pup with other dogs of a similar play style is likely to make things go smoother. She's dialing it back a little bit, but still trying to see just how rough she can go. Inertia's just like, you can get on me. She keeps offering. Boy, they're really into each other. Okay, back to training. Let's see how that leave it, look at me combo is doing in this distracting environment. Inertia, look at me. Good, yes, leave it alone. Looks like we still have a little work to do to polish up that impulse control. Look at me. Good. Here we're working on general training like come when called and getting her used to having her harness grab. Her attention is a little in and out right now, but she's showing improvement. All in all, that was a great puppy class. Inertia has been displaying signs of minor anxiety when the yard guys show up. Motorized things like lawn mowers and leaf blowers really throw her off. And since they don't call before they come, I have to really be ready to snap into training mode. This is why secondary training sessions are so important. I'm doing some counter conditioning here and I'm just making sure that I get her in an optimistic mood, keep her focused on something she really loves while in the presence of these things. And if she wants to retreat, I'm gonna let her do that. It's really important for her to feel comfortable on her terms. Oh, she's noticing right there. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that neat? I'm just gonna let her go under the table if she feels more comfortable. I'm gonna see if she returns. Good girl. Hey, you want this? Inertia, you want this? Feel safe with mommy over there, huh? Neat, good girl, yeah, perfect. Like how she looked at it, nothing wrong with being cautious of something new and loud like that. Now she seems to have tuned it out, that's great. These are really good training opportunities when you're in an indoor environment and you have some of the outdoors bleeding in like this. Maybe it's a dog barking, maybe it's the weed whacker or the lawnmower. It really allows you to kind of ease in new environments. She was in her crate when they first got here and like what if I wasn't here and the yard guy showed up and I had her in her crate? I want her comfortable in her crate when I'm not yet prepared to jump into one of these conditioning sessions. I want her to get used to being in her crate, feel very comfortable with that going on at close range. You can see that leaf blower is right there. And look, she's a little nervous. It's okay, here you go. A little cautious, but let's see if she'll take a treat. That'll tell us how nervous she is here. Oops. You want this? Yes, okay, so she's taking a treat. Now let me see if I can walk away and I'm gonna monitor her body language to make sure that she doesn't get too, too nervous. Yes. I'm gonna come back here, let her know, hey, you're there all alone. Motorized objects are happening around you and everything is wonderful. 
Now I'm gonna decrease the rate of reinforcement here a little bit because she's doing really well. I'm hoping that she might lie down in the presence of these sounds. So you can hear the sounds. You can see she's naturally relaxing. I'm gonna let her get into this hopefully more relaxed frame of mind and then I'll come and give her some chicken again. So there, she's been lying down. Good work. Inertia, you are such a brave young lady. I'm so proud of Inertia. She did really well around the lawn, guys. Let's take her to a new public place and let her explore the world. We are at the park. Whoa, you're gonna love this place. I'm carrying her because she's not yet fully vaccinated, but I think we'll be okay once we get inside this sports field over here. Inertia is just about 12 weeks old now. I've brought her back out to the sports field because last time I was here, she got a little bit nervous. In fact, some people were playing soccer before and she got a little nervous about that, so I thought I would bring our own soccer ball out today and see if we can get her more comfortable. First introduction to a soccer ball. Ready? Go get it. Look at her chase it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. I really want to introduce Inertia to a variety of new toys as well as experiment to find out what she likes. Remember, every dog is different. If it turns out that she loves this thing enough, you can use it as a currency in the future. Get her to do stuff in exchange for just playing with the soccer ball for a bit. Okay, let's see how her fetch is looking in this brand new place. Good, yes, come on. <laughs> oh, that was great, look at that. Good. See if she'll give it up voluntarily. I'm gonna take this. Very good. Well, she didn't protest. I get really excited when my dog listens to me in new places like this. That's one of the hardest things to do in dog training. I'm walking away from her to encourage her to keep chasing me. Inertia. Wait, where'd your toy go? Let's go back and get your toy. She's getting there, still needs some improvement. So this is what beginning fetch with a puppy looks like. You've got to start somewhere. So that was a good experience overall. Good job, Inertia. Inertia has the very common annoying habit of picking up everything off of the ground. So I like to stop what I'm doing and focus on unplanned training sessions like this periodically. But remember, it's a balance. So you'll need to be very tolerant of this obnoxious behavior. So right now, you know, I'm tempted to do a real life leave it session, but this is some rough stuff here because it doesn't take much for her to grab a hold of this grass. Um, let me see if I can get some traction though, because right now she's pretty resistant. See this? Leave it alone. Yes, good. See this? Leave it. Yes, good. See this? Leave it. I'm gonna try and get some momentum here. Fine. Take that. Good girl. Leave it. Leave it alone. Look at me. Yes, very good. This by no means means that she's never gonna go for this type of debris on the ground. She'll probably do it many more times today, but this is how you at least start to introduce them to the idea. Go the extra mile. Hey, oh, look at that, leave it. Yes, I, I like that. She came over here, she sniffed the pile of grass and she didn't pick it up. Leave it alone. Leave it. Yes, you want a treat? She's like, yeah, I'll take a treat. We have like a little league baseball game going on in the background here. And so I think we're gonna try and get a little closer to the action so she can see a little bit more details to what's going on. And right now she's just into smelling around and checking everything out. So I'm not too concerned with rewarding her as much as I am concerned with just giving her exposure. Look, she's less interested in the soccer ball over here. That could be because of the game going on over here. It could be because this is technically a new environment. There may be completely different smells on the ground over here. So this little patch of real estate is something she's never seen before. And everything is so interesting to her as it is to most puppies. Be understanding with your dog if they're not immediately paying attention to you in these new places. Inertia is meeting Lucy for the first time. We've been going out of our way to schedule play dates with other dogs for Inertia. So we invited her new friend Lucy to come over to the studio. Lucy is a little nervous of people, but she looks like she's opening up quite a lot here to Inertia. You can see their body language is healthy, right? Inertia's wagging her tail, Lucy's wagging her tail. They seem to be playful right off the bat. Inertia's saying, and chase me, chase me. Cute. 
This is worthy of an Instagram story. This is Lucy and Inertia playing. Lucy's typically pretty nervous of people, but this is a good way to help her overcome that. So I'm loving what I'm seeing here. I mean, both dogs are reacting very playfully. You can see Inertia goes onto her back a lot voluntarily, which is a good way to encourage play. They're both mirroring each other's play style here, which are all indicators that they're on the same page and clicking well. You can see throughout the series, we are featuring lots of different play sessions with Inertia and other dogs dogs because she's so young, but your dog can be any age to get benefit from this. This is how they learn social skills with each other. Obviously, do your best to pair your dog up with dogs that play in a similar way. Inertia is trying to initiate a play mount. Hopefully it's a play mount. I'm going to be watching that right now because I don't want her trying to mount a dog and pin him down as many dogs will instinctively do. So usually when that happens, I'll just break up the play session, give him a minute to chill out and then let him resume. Your dog eventually learns that, hey, when I get that rough, the play session ends. That's that's no fun. And as with class, alternating general training sessions with play here is a good idea. We'll play in a minute, but you gotta listen to me. So here, you know, she's trying to play and I don't want her playing just yet. I want to get her attention on me, maybe do a sit or down, and then I'll let her play again. The currency isn't quite strong enough right now and I didn't bring chicken out here. So let me see if I can get more exciting. Maybe that'll help. Okay, yes, no. Sit? Yes, good. I think I'll pick my battles here though and let her get back to playing and doing some training later. And you can see she's testing there, getting a little nippy, a little mounty, but so far it's within reason. She's using restraint and Lucy returning the behavior. So that's what I mean by mirroring behavior. They're both playing in a similar way. Uh-uh. Yeah, cattle teacher. <laughs> My nurse is getting super wound up. I don't want her to get overly wound up. That's why I'm continuing to intervene and give breaks here. Just breaking them up. Now that dialed back the intensity of the play, learning how to greet each other in uh, dog acceptable ways. This is great. Now you can see both dogs are actually chilling out. Inertia isn't just obsessed with her. So she's learning how to not be overbearing just because a dog is around. That's also very beneficial and part of social skills. All right, let's start with a potty training update. You know, it's going pretty well. We've gone like three or four days without an accident at all. I'm fully prepared for setbacks as is common with potty training. So I'm not gonna get too excited yet. But to review, in short, the formula for potty training is relentlessly controlling their environment environment while taking them outside more than they need to go. Every time that I catch her having an accident, I just kick myself because it's like, ah, I should have let her out. But I just, you know, pick her up and take her outside. There's no scolding or anything like that because I don't want her to get this complex about going potty. Can you, shouldn't you stop chewing shoelaces by now? Okay, we're still working on the shoelace thing. She seems to have a preference for Nike over Adidas. Can, let, let go. Yes, good, perfect, wonderful. So by having my currency on me, I'm prepared to reward the fact that she let go right there. And I'm not gonna hide my shoes. In fact, let's see, Le leave it alone. So she's like, I'll leave your sh shoelaces alone, but I'll bite your thumb instead. Ouch, leave it. Yes, good, <laughs> nice work, yeah, look. I think she's starting to anticipate treats here. What's this? Leave it alone. Yes! Give me a sit. Nice, and give me a down. Oh, look at that. And how about back up into a sit? Here we go, sit. I didn't repeat sit over and over. I saw that she was in a pretty stable position, held that treat up, because I knew that eventually she was gonna go up to sit. Yes! Good, and I'll even take the wave. We'll cover that in a minute. She's been offering that a lot more. Okay, good job. It can be obnoxious right now. I'm focused on making a dog training video, but she keeps interfering with my points. So I'm having to stop what I'm doing and focus directly on her so that I can teach her. Yes, very good. Notice the position of my shoe right now. I'm not keeping it away from her. I wanna be able to put that shoelace right under her nose and have her leave it alone. This has become a huge part of this series, right? You don't always get to focus on what the lesson is on paper because, well, you got a 12 week old puppy on your hands and you never know what these guys are gonna do. Sometimes when I have her in the house still on leash, I'm much better about detecting when I think she's about to go. Now again, I think that's probably too late. I should be letting her out before I even detect that she's sniffing around because she has to go. Like, what do you think this is? Do you think maybe she has to go right now? I don't know, that makes me nervous. I'm gonna go outside, let's see. Okay, come on. 
You have to go potty? Do you have to go pee? Yes. Look at that. Good job. And that's exactly what I mean. You've got to really get to know your dog's individual body language and the way that they foreshadow, hey, I'm about to go potty. So if you ever have a question as to whether or not you should take your dog outside, take them outside. We were doing an Instagram Live and a nurse has started offering her paw and it was a really great moment. I want to work with her more on wave slash shake. They're almost the same trick. Like wave is where a dog picks up their paw and you don't touch it and shake is where you actually shake their hand when they offer it. I like teaching wave first because it's really cute for pictures. I'm going to be using the clicker for this. Remember the click just means good dog. I like that. Here's a treat. Ready and sit. Good. I'm gonna start off by rewarding with an easy sit, getting her in a positive mindset. Yes, wave, see that? So it's kind of like when she sees the treat, she starts pawing at it, and I've decided to capture that behavior. Like, if I hold my hands right there, that's where she offers it. If I were just to say, wave, she's like, what are you talking about? But if I do this little motion right here, wave, then she's like, hey, that, that's kind of my cue to, to start pawing at your hand. Wave, now there I didn't do it. So she's starting to anticipate. So feel them out. Don't be too rigid on, yes, on insisting that they do it your way. Like find what works for your dog and go with that. Let's see if we can start to introduce a hand signal maybe like wave, good. See how it kind of cheated right there? I did this, right? And then wave, good. And then I kind of snuck in a, a hand signal. This is how you kind of evolve your hand signals. And wave, yes, good. <laughs> See, and she's like, wait a minute, I'm confused again. What was that thing I did? Sit. She gets a little nippy when she gets confused. A little frustrated, see her scratching right there. Let me see if I can bring her back down into a more patient frame of mind. Here, I'm gonna give her some easy stuff to do. New tricks can be challenging for your dog and it's natural for them to experience a little bit of frustration. I'm gonna let her sniff around here for a sec. This is a normal part of training. You can't just always power through a training session. You can try and get them back and, and reward them with something easy, but if they're just like, ah, this is so frustrating, give them a break. You wanna try again and sit, good. All right, so there she's like, fine. Yes, yes, wave, good. And now she remembered. See, sometimes you just need a second to remember what it was. We can relate with that as people, can't we? Yes, wave, sit, yes, and wave, good. See the timing there? That was a good example. She started to go into the down, but I was there to acknowledge. She's brainstorming. Wave, good. You can see she's well on her way to learning this. I'll keep you posted on it. Hey, you're doing great. Let's switch gears and do leash walking. Leash walking is definitely one of the most challenging things to teach any dog, and it can take a long time, so that's why I'm starting now and I'm really focused on still on indoor leash walking, not even outdoor leash walking where there are tons of distractions. A lot of people are in a hurry to get leash walking skills taught immediately, but you've gotta remember, this is a much more advanced skill than sit or lie down or stay. This takes a long time because it's one of the most unnatural things you can ask a, an energetic dog to do. So remember, we're asking them to walk slowly while tethered to a person. Border Collies, like her and many other breeds and mixed breeds out there, were bred for the complete opposite thing. They were bred to have endless stamina and endurance while at a distance, while retrieving something, and in her case, herding sheep. So there's nothing intuitive about leash walking to a dog. Okay, come on, let's go. And I'm, <laughs> you can see what's going on here, right? Leash biting, oh boy, wasn't anticipating this. I thought we had this under control, inertia. All right, so let's call it audible now and uh, address this real quick. Hey, look at me. Good. Since we've been prioritizing look at me like that, that's kind of what I've been relying on when she does go into those biting phases. See the scratching over here? She's like, what do you want me to do? What's going on? I just want that chicken. Okay, come on, let's go. Yes, good girl. Notice how I'm hunched over, keeping my training bubble pretty small. Over here. Yes, good girl. I'm walking backwards because that's a more natural way to encourage your dog to follow you. Come on. Because you can be eye to eye with them, teaching them how to walk slowly by being in front of them, keeping them focused on you. Good work. Notice how she's not going for my laces as she has in past leash walking sessions. So that's improvement. Come on, this way. Yes, good work. Very nice, much more focused. Okay, come here. Oh, da, 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 da. She thought about it. Can you give me a sit? 
I'll take it. You see how she's just now really fighting that urge to go into the biting the pant legs and biting the shoelaces, because that's what's natural for her to want to do. So this is starting to get a little bit of traction, this indoor leash walking in this easy setting. You'll know if you've ever had a dog that when you take them on a walk, if there's any debris on the ground, especially puppies, they tend to want to go for that and grab it and interact with it. So we really have to get her leave it under these primary training sessions looking a lot better. So I need to now start introducing distractions in this controlled setting before I can expect her to listen to me when organic distractions arise in public. For example, when we were at the sports field and she was picking up the dirt clods on the ground, it was just too much for her. And we did get a little bit of traction, but it wasn't ideal. Do you see what she's doing right now? She's saying, I'm bored, give me chicken. Let's see if I can get her to let go without pulling the leash out. That doesn't teach her, that's why I'm not doing it. Inertia, look at me. See that? Giving them that alternative behavior to do and saying paying attention to me is what pays, not biting on the leash. That's not done overnight. This has been weeks we've been dealing with this. Let me see how she's doing on leave it with something low value like her kibble, leave it alone. Good, perfect. I love it. I'm moving them around on purpose because that's typically more tempting, remember? Leave it. Yes, good job. Perfect. But it's quite a different thing to have your dog leave kibble or any other distraction you introduce while you're moving. Inertia, come here. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it alone. See that? Because the context is completely different than this setup training session, I've got to work on this because she's like, if we're walking, leave it doesn't apply. So let's try that again. This time I'm going to slow down my pace a little bit. I'm not just going to go and drop it and say, leave it. Whenever you're introducing new things to your dog, go in slow motion like this. Come on, let's go. Leave it. Look at me. Yes. Good. I could click. I could say yes. Very good. I'm going to turn around the other way now. Come on. Inertia, come on. Leave it. Look at me. Yes. Very good. Okay, come on. Let's go. I'm going to drop a piece of chicken now, make it a bit tougher. Oh. <laughs> so right there, she was going for the piece of food. I didn't want to pull her back. I'd rather cover up the piece of food on the ground, this kibble right here, because it's a good training opportunity. This way, come on. Leave it. Look at me. Yeah, good job. Really good moment there. Up here. Look at that. Not having to touch her at all. Not restraining her in any way. Teaching her to think from the inside out. Don't ever let anyone tell you force is necessary to train a dog. Come here, come on, leave it alone. Look at me. Nice job, girl. Very good. So I'm able to start doing a little bit more of a realistic walk now standing more upright than I was before. That was a good little training session. So later on, it was time to build on that lesson. Inertia is really picking up on this whole concept of walking on a leash when I throw a treat as a distraction and she's leaving it alone and I'm able to get her attention on, on me in an easy indoor environment. But I don't wanna limit my training to only throwing food treats in that setup instance. So I'm gonna work on using a toy that she likes as a distraction. You might be wondering if that's confusing to your dog, but actually, you you know, dogs are capable of understanding when it's okay to play with a toy and when it's not. I mean, I've got to make sure she'll leave alone something familiar in an easy environment before I ask her to do it in public. Let's go. Leave it. Ah, okay. All right, so she just went right for it there. Let's try that again. Let's go. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Leave it. Leave it alone. Ah, okay. No, not quite there. Not quite there. That's okay, though. That's why we practice. Leave it. Good. Okay, come here, perfect, good. You saw her pause when I said leave it. She's like, wait a minute, this is a test, I know it. But she's using that noggin. Okay, come on, leave it alone. Yes, good. Very good, and this way, come on. Leave it. Ha! Oh, that was cool. I mean, did you see that? It's like she was thrown off for a sec, but it's, it seemed to click, albeit a little bit late. <laughs> Come here, let's go. 
like a sit yes okay let's go <laughs> leave it yes good leave it yes perfect very good come on let's go <laughs> leave it alone good sit all right let's throw a curveball now leave it yes good okay come on Let's go. Let's go, it's okay. Look at her, look at her think. Leave it. Look at me. Love it, leave it. I'm gonna throw a treat out there just to keep it interesting. Look at me. Yes. See, leave it and look at me works. Get creative with this. The point is that you have to do this with so many different household objects so that your dog eventually learns, hey, by default, I leave things alone. Shoes are a temptation. All right, well, what the heck, maybe for the video, let's throw a sock out there. Leave it. Good. Okay, good job. I'm gonna give her a jackpot reward there just because she did so well. I'll be doing exercises like this daily for the foreseeable future with her. Our latest trick is weave through the legs. Paw as you can, or wave is coming along nicely though, as you can see. She's like, I'm gonna wave. I'm gonna not reward the wave because I wanna focus on teaching the new thing. For this one, I'm actually gonna take her leash off because the leash may get in the way. I'm gonna lure her here, yes! Look at this, how about this? Whoa, oh, oh well. Let us let me do a better job luring. Oh yes, that's wonderful. Here, yes, this way, good. My end goal is to have her do a figure eight pattern through my legs. Good, do you see how I'm luring her right there? That's all I'm doing. You can find the best way for you to lure. That was awesome, good job. Yeah, it does take a little mechanics on, on your part. She gets, she's getting a little distracted by my pant leg. That biting right there is likely due to frustration on her part because a moment ago I was rewarding here, 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 and here. And so now she's like, wait a minute, I gotta do all that work for just one treat? So we have to phase that in. Let me see if I can get her in a more patient mindset here. Yes. So I'm gonna take a step back and up my rate of reinforcement. That is the pace at which I reward. See, I'm rewarding very frequently in order to keep her in a good mindset. Yes. Good job. This way, come here. This way, this way, and yes. Good job, wonderful. Now you may need to practice the mechanics of the treat distribution here before you even attempt to teach your dog or else you're bound to get a little frustrated because that switching with the treats is a little awkward. And since I'm only at the luring phase right now, I'm not even anywhere close to putting a word to it. In this case, I'd probably call it something like weave or figure eights. I'd say weaving through the legs looks really promising. We'll see how it evolves. I've done a lot of training with inertia today and I think this is a wonderful time to start phasing in a real world set. Settle. Up to now, I've had her on leash and in my hand or tied to me at all times when we're walking around the house just to keep her in my vicinity because I have to manage her surroundings. Remember, she is only 12 weeks old. So management is a big part of preventing bad habits and very deliberately showing them how you do want them to behave with the world. I know that she really likes to lie on the cold marble floor over here. So I'm gonna encourage her to, let me see if I can put her into a sit and a down. I think she's naturally getting a bit tired, so I'm just gonna try and encourage her to settle by saying settle. Settle is basically where you ask your dog, go check out, I'm busy right now. And as you can imagine, teaching a dog to just relax on cue is different than teaching other things because you're actually trying to get them in a relaxed, calm state of mind. Now, I have been frequently capturing the settle up to this point, but not enough to trust her to get up and walk away, for example. You'll remember capturing just means acknowledging what a dog is doing as they're doing it. I think she's going to settle naturally and if I can communicate to her what she's doing then she's more likely to repeat the behavior in the future okay now this is interesting I was gonna get up but let's see what she's gonna do if she's just relocating and she's gonna hit a settle that's fine with me I know she likes this spot over here there we go she can settle yes I'm saying the word as she goes into the settle Gonna put the leash right there. I'm gonna walk around. I'm gonna go slow. I'm not gonna be animated. I'm not gonna be excited. I'm just walking around. Settle. Yes. Settle. 
I'm also saying yes in a different way than I normally do when I follow it up with a treat. This is a real nuanced thing right here because that kind of yes, yes, just basically means I like what you're doing right now. Be cool. Whereas a yes is usually followed up with a treat. The reason I'm not giving her treats for settle is because that's likely to get her in a more excited frame of mind and less likely to encourage her to just tune out. Very good job, Inertia. Settle. I'm kind of doing a hand signal with it. Inertia, look at me. Yes. Settle. Yes. If I do exercises like this enough, she gets that the context equals, okay, settle means I just relax, maybe take a nap, and my dad hangs out around me. This is an example of training contextually in a setting that really strongly resembles real life. So now she got up. Since she's being pretty calm right now, I wanna see if she goes and naturally settles down. Again, I don't mind the shifting or anything like that. I don't want her running all over the house and biting furniture but it looks like she might be getting a little more playful, so this is interesting. Let me think about this for a second. What do I want to do? I guess I don't want her chewing the box right now, so I guess I should get her attention off of that. Hey, Inertia, come. So here, I do have my treats. I am gonna reward now because I want her off of that, and let, let us see if we can get her back into a voluntary settle. I'm, I'm gonna give her a hint, so I'll say, come on over here. Good. Can I have a sit? How about a down? So I did give her a treat, but look at what she had to do to earn that treat. She had to leave the box alone, come to me when I called her, come back to this point, do a sit and a lie down. So I don't want to make it too advantageous for her to break out of that settle. I'm going to have her hold this position for a sec. Settle. Yes. Settle. I'm not just gonna sit there for five minutes though. I'm gonna get back close to her where she's more likely to listen. That's where we are in settle training. I was able to sit in the chair for like a second and that's great. So I'm gonna continue to evolve that into a real world settle. Clearly right now she's feeling playful, so I'm not gonna just insist on it. It's on me to kind of wait for her to be in the correct state of mind to teach something like a settle or anything else. You have to listen to your puppy and what they're willing to give you. The younger your dog is, the more say they have in when they get taught things. To keep up with us between episodes, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe and hit the bell notification. Make your life easier and get your pet's food automatically delivered to you from PetFlow too. Next time, I'll teach Inertia how to give a hug, focus on reducing her barking outbursts when in her puppy bedroom. We'll do some training in new public places, more puppy class, and lots more. Oh, oh, oh.